Aloha and Mahalo. Welcome to Chappie's Tiki Bar. This is the Mai Tai episode. We're going to learn all about the originator of the Mai Tai, Trader Vix. We're going to get his secret Mai Tai recipe. But first off, I'm going to make a spiked Arnold Palmer. We're going to go to Tom's House of Pizza in Calgary, Alberta. We got best tropical destination stories. I'm going to make a breakfast burrito some shrimp toast. Jimmy the Nose is going to tell you all about the legend of Trader Vic. I'm going to make some orge, which is a key ingredient in Mai Tai. And then we have a bonus Appies with Chappie where I make lobster rangoon. Coming up all right here on Chappie's Tiki Bar. It's uh, Chappie from Chappie's Tiki Bar. With me as always is Mookie. Uh, today we got a great show. I'm going to do the ultimate tiki drink, which is a Mai Tai. I'm going to do my version of a Mai Tai, so Chappie's Mai Tai. I'm going to make uh, some homemade orge. That's a special uh, syrup to go with my Mai Tai. Uh, first off, I'm going to do a spiked Arnold Palmer to get things rolling. Uh, then we're going to uh, go get some takeout, and uh, then we're going to do Appies with Chappie by the lake. Uh, I'm going to do some uh, shrimp toast, which is a classic uh, tiki bar poo-poo platter type uh, appetizer. Uh, so I'm going to get started with my spiked Arnold Palmer. So i got some large ice cubes today. And so uh, basically an Arnold Palmer is just iced tea and lemonade. And then I'm going to spike it. So I have some uh, freshly brewed iced tea that I brewed myself. And then I'm going to give it a good hit of fresh lemon. Ooh, watch your eyes, Mookie. Don't get any citrus in your eyes. You won't like that. All right. And then some actual lemonade. And then I have some uh, absolute lime vodka, so uh, any citrus type vodka will uh, add to it nicely. All right, give it a little stir. And I have a lemon wheel. And that is my spiked Arnold Palmer. Ooh, very nice, very spiked. All right, so uh, we're going to go get a little uh, dinner. We're going to do some takeout. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, one of my uh, favorite pizza places in town, Tom's House of Pizza. So I'm going to go pick that up, and I'll take it back here, and me and Mookie will have a little uh, pizza. All right, so we got some Tom's House of Pizza. I went and picked it up. So on the website it says, Welcome to Tom's House of Pizza, Calgary's oldest existing pizzeria. Tom's House of Pizza opened its doors on June 7th, 1963, when a young Tom realized his dreams of opening a family pizzeria in South Calgary. The original location on McLeod Trail is still serving the same great thin crust pizza today. All the while maintaining Tom's original commitment to providing the best pizza in Calgary at a family-friendly pricing. These days, thin crust pizza is the in thing. Around here, it's been the in thing for decades. That's why Tom's House of Pizza is a favorite destination for families who crave high quality thin crust. That's uh, the Greek. Uh, my girlfriend's a vegetarian, so I got some Greek pizza. And that's my spicy pepperoni. Uh, thin crust. Really like it. And the, I think they make the pepperoni in-house, possibly. So there's uh, six locations. Uh, the website goes on to say our most popular item, our spicy pepperoni, is exclusive to Tom's House of Pizza. 
as is our Italian salami. They used to have one in Lethbridge, but it closed, which is a shame. Mookie, I am your father. All right, so uh, this is Best Tropical Destination Stories. Uh, so as always, Mookie's go going to summon the tiki drum for my Best Tropical Destination story. So uh, go ahead, Mookie, summon that tiki drum. Thank you, Mookie. So, um, if you have any tropical destination stories that you'd like to send me, uh, send them to chappinesstikibar at yahoo.com, and I'll read uh, whatever crap you send me on my show. All right, so um, this tropical destination story, I think because we're going to go out to the lake for appies with Chappie, um, I'll do a good lake story. Uh, now this involves uh, a reoccurring character, uh, so one of my friends, he anonymously sent in a story under the name RJ, so we'll go with that, we'll keep on calling him RJ. Um, if, if you know who RJ is, you prob probably know who he really is, so uh, just by the type of stories that he's been uh, giving us. So this one, it's actually my story, but uh, RJ is the star character in it. So uh, we were, and again, this one is from a million years ago. We did a trip out to the Okanagan, and uh, we were staying in Kelowna. Uh, there was uh, RJ, Bruce, and me, and uh, we were in a, a bar, and uh, RJ was talking to some ladies, um, and he thought it would be a good idea to... Uh, pretend he was American, so he was talking in this uh, fake American accent, and he goes to these girls, he's like, where are you all from? And uh, he, they asked him, uh, how do you get to Banff, Canada from here? And they're like, well, Banff is in Alberta, you're in British Columbia. And he goes, well, uh, can I walk there? And they're like, no, not really, the uh, Rocky Mountains are kind of in between, it's, it's again in a another province and he, and he turns to these girls and he goes well Canada can't be that big of a country if a guy with uh, one leg can walk across it so uh, they, uh, the, gr the girls didn't seem all that impressed uh, but they I think they did believe he was American so that is my best tropical destination story lake version uh, again, send your best tropical destination stories to Chappiness Tiki Bar at yahoo.com and I'll read them on my show. So coming up next, uh, we'll go out, back out to the lake. Um, I think I was really hungover for this. Uh, I made some breakfast burritos. So we'll do some breakfast burritos out at the lake. Good morning. Uh, Uncle Chappie's a little hungover, so I'm going to make a nice hangover breakfast. I got some... Uh, giant kielbasa. I think I'm going to do a breakfast burrito. But first, I'm going to do uh, an espresso just to wake myself up. Um, I got one of these uh, old-timey espresso makers that you do right on the stove. I actually got this from Italy. It's uh, three parts. So just the top part, bottom part, and then the filter. So uh, it's kind kind of cool. I'll show you how I make my espresso. So you just uh, fill up the uh, base with water, and then put the filter in, and then we're gonna add the espresso. So espresso is uh, like a, just a finer uh, ground of coffee, and you want to pack that in nice and tight and we're going to screw this on nice and tight
And then this just goes on the top of the stove and I'm going to have some nice espresso. Alright, so here's my breakfast burrito. I got a nice hot non-stick pan. I got some uh, butter in there. And I diced up some of uh, the kielbasa and some green pepper. Gonna crisp up that kielbasa nicely. So in goes the egg. You don't want to overcook the egg. Incorporate everything together. You see the egg takes no time at all to cook. And then last but not least I have some nice Velveeta cheese. I just love that cheese. It just uh, melts like butter. And that's going to take no time at all to melt. I'm just going to fold it around. And then I'm going to plate it. So uh, you want to uh, nuke that uh, flour tortilla a little bit just to make it a little bit more pliable when you uh, go to roll it. And that just takes a little bit of practice to get a nice uh, burrito wrap. And then I'm going to seal the deal, so um, the, the uh, edge where uh, the flour tortilla meets, that's what I'm going to put down first. And then, yeah, like I said, it kind of seals the deal. And you want to get it nice and toasty brown. My breakfast burrito with a big scoop of fresh salsa on the side. Go fresh, the other stuff tastes like ketchup. Alright, coming up next, I'm going to do my shrimp toast. Appies with Chappy by the lake. Alright, so I'm going to do up some uh, shrimp toast. Uh, so Don the Beachcomber was uh, the first uh, tiki bar. Um, and on in his restaurant, he had something called the Poo Poo Platter. And on the Poo Poo Platter, he had shrimp toast. Um, I'm not joking. So it says uh, on Wikipedia, a poo-poo platter is a tray of American, Chinese, or Hawaiian food consisting of an assortment of small meat and seafood appetizers. Uh, the poo-poo platter was probably introduced to restaurants in the United States mainland by Don the Beachcomber in 1934. Uh, it, it has since become a standard at most popular Polynesian themed restaurants such as Don's and Trader Vic's. So there you go, uh, poo poo platter. So um, put any poo poo platter jokes in the comments below. Uh, I think the, the Bloodhound Gang had a good one on the beginning of one of their songs. It said, uh, if your ass was a Chinese food restaurant, I'd order the poo poo platter. Uh, I think the name of the song was, I wish I was gay so I could get chicks. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to get started on that uh, shrimp toast. Um, so I have some nice white uh, shrimp. It's de-veined, uh, de no tails, um, no shell. Uh, they're, they're not very big, but I'm going to uh, pulse them up in the uh, food processor anyways. So um, I'm just going to add some Asian flavors to the shrimp. Um, so I got some scallions or, or cut spring onions. Uh, I got both the green and the white part. And then a little bit of sesame oil. And we're going to put a little bit of olive oil. And then I have some Chinese five spice. And then I have something, it's not very Asian, it's a uh, tandoor seasoning, uh, but it says it has paprika, 
cumin, clove, and cardamom. So that'll add some exotic flavor. And then, of course, we're going to do a little soy sauce. And I have some oyster sauce. Uh, the oyster sauce will add a little bit of sweetness and keep in with that Asian theme. And then last but not least, I have a little bit of honey garlic sauce. Oh, and then we need uh, a little, uh, we have one, the, the, the uh, egg whites from one egg. Uh, that's going to act as a binder and help it cling to my toast. Uh, so I'm just going to pop that in the food processor and give it a little pulse. And then we'll get started on my shrimp toast. So you just want to give it a few quick pulses so it's uh, super chunky and then I'm just uh, spreading it on. That's just uh, untoasted bread and it's uh, with the eggs and the raw shrimp it's very slimy right now but uh, trust me it will uh, adhere to the bread. Just make sure the uh, oil is uh, nice and hot. So you want that oil around uh, 350 to 375 uh, and then you're going to put it in shrimp side down a uh, good way to test the oil to see if it's ready is just drop a little tiny piece of bread and if it starts uh, bubbling then you know it's good to go and uh, you don't want to under fry this or it's going to be soggy and you, you want to give it a good little while uh, so that shrimp's going to stick to the bread the, the first flip is the uh, hardest you don't want to lose that shrimp so don't be an idiot like me and uh, use your bare hand on the uh, scorching hot oil This one here I smartened up, I got a pair of tongs to do the flip. There's a big flip. Oh, we lost one shrimp. That's not bad though, it uh, stuck together pretty good. And again, you want to get it nice and crispy, so uh, you don't want the sh soggy shrimp toast. So there's my crispy shrimp toast. I just gave it a hit of salt and pepper at the end there, and that's my poo poo platter shrimp toast hey jimmy the nose here coming up chappie's gonna make his very own version of the Mai Tai. But first, a little history of the originator of the Mai Tai. So we've mentioned Don the Beachcomber on this show multiple times, uh, but the second tiki bar in America was Trader Vic's. So Trader Vic's created the first Mai Tai. They also had a creation called Crab Rangoon, which we'll get to later. So I'll just read you a, a little bit from this book. It's called Smuggler's Cove Exotic Cocktails, Rum and the Cult of Tiki, written by Martin Kate with Rebecca Kate. It says, The Trader. It was not what you'd characterize as an easy upbringing. Born Victor Jules Bergeron in San Francisco in 1902, he suffered from a string of childhood illnesses, culminating in tuberculosis, 
of the bone at age four. He was in the hospital when the great quake of 1906 struck. And again, two years later, to have his leg amputated to stop the spread of TB. Uh, Raised by French parents who loved to hunt and cook, uh, Vic's family settled in Oakland, California when he was nine and opened a small grocery store as a young man. Victor moved through a series of jobs and recurrent bouts of tuberculosis before borrowing $800 from his aunt, building a 22 by 26 foot one room restaurant across from the grocery store in 1934. It wasn't much to look at. Room for 30 inside if they felt like getting cozy. A pot-bellied stove to warm up the place and heat some meals on. But Victor knew how to entertain a guest. A little song, a little dance, maybe a card trick or two. Free lunches of salted herring and crab washed down with a couple of 10-cent beers kept the Depression-era crowds coming in all hours. Soon other rooms were added to the structure and the place took on a feel of a hunting lodge. It was called Hinky Dinks, and despite being located on a dusty stretch of San Pablo Avenue and having cattle marched past the front door daily on their way to the slaughterhouse, it managed to become a sensation. Although Vic had a rowdy and convivial hit on his hands, he knew better than to rest on his laurels. Vic served the kind of standard simple cocktail you find in a neighborhood saloon. But he took notice of one of his drinks. The creamy rum-packed banana cow was widely popular. He started to wonder if maybe people might pay a few cents more to drink something a bit more celebratory, a touch more exotic. In an effort to improve his own knowledge of cocktails and hopefully make a few extra bucks upon his return, he and his wife took an extended trip to Louisiana and the Caribbean. His travels brought him to some of the most legendary bars in New Orleans and Havana. He picked the brains of bartenders he met there, the hows, the whys, the tips, the tricks. The menu was soon augmented with the drinks he had seen on his travels and a few creative spins of his own. It worked. The regulars were anxious to try his latest inventions and first-time visitors became regulars soon enough. But while Vic had seen the cradle of the daiquiri in Havana and tasted the cooling elixirs of New Orleans, there was a sound calling him from much closer to home. Word had traveled north of an unusual little watering hole in Hollywood that was drawing in both stars and stargazers. Vic wanted to see for himself. In 1937, he made the first pilgrimage to Don the Beachcomber. The first time he pushed open the rattan and jade tiled doors left him a changed man. In fact, he never wanted to leave. While Vic would forever give credit to Don in his menus and freely admit his visit offered inspiration, former Don the Beachcomber's employees tell a tale of a man they called the Rope Hanger. Between his constant questions about the food and drinks and his gawking at celebrities, Vic was eventually shown the door, but would stand outside against the velvet ropes all night just hoping for a chance to get back into the palace. Vic returned home inspired. Don's rum and celebrity filled boite confirmed Vic's belief that tropical was the way forward. His wife agreed and they set about transforming the decor of the hinky dink space. Lots of decoration causes lots of conversation, and lots of conversation sells lots of drinks. Vic would later recount in his autobiography. Down came the snowshoes and deer heads, and up went the fishnets and float lamps. He bought pieces uh, from friends and even Dawn Beach. But it was his habit of offering his guests food and drink in exchange for decorative curios that earned both Victor and his joint a nickname that would be found above the doors of his restaurants for decades to come. Trader Vic. At the same time, Vic had been traveling across the bay to San Francisco, dining at Chinese restaurants with an eye towards one day opening a Chinese place of his own. But now he realized that the westernized version of Chinese food that had become popular around the West Coast during the Depression was the perfect foil to the kind of drinks he had planned to serve. The food was filling, inexpensive, and yet maintained an air of exotic. Tastes were foreign to the uninitiated palate of the time. So Victor sniffed around Chinatown and came back with a few ideas of his own. He had Chinese ovens built, which were capable of quickly cooking and smoking meats with an indirect flame, 
and these would become his, a signature of all his future restaurants. Vic himself wrote, There was no fanfare about the opening, just closed one day as Hinky Dinks selling sandwiches and opened as Trader Vic's selling tropical drinks and Chinese food. What that uncharacteristically modest statement does not reveal was at the heart of both ventures, there was a man whose outsized personality became one of the restaurant's most featured attractions. His bellowing laugh and warm but gruff demeanor became well known throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. Vic's tales of the South Seas adventure and his own birth on a distant atoll were purely imaginary. He wouldn't travel there until years later. His wooden leg, a legacy of childhood tuberculosis, now became the memento of a shark attack, and guests were shocked and delighted as he drove a knife into it for their amusement. By 1941, Pulitzer Prize-winning San Francisco columnist Herb Cain declared, to the everlasting delight of Vic, the best restaurant in San Francisco is in Oakland a statement that ruffled feathers of San Franciscans then as it would now. For guests seated among the engaging artifacts of the South Seas commerce, both real and imagined, it wasn't just the decor on the walls that had them talking. It was the decor in their hands as well. Drinks came in elaborate bowls and vases depicting island scenes topped with fragrant flowers and souvenir swizzle sticks, all of which added to the experience and fueled repeat sales Vic's foray into exotic cocktails was a unique hybrid of his travels and observations, with a few genuine inventions of his own. In 1944, it all coalesced into the ultimate creation, the Mai Tai, the drink that would cement his place in history. Now, uh, before Chappie uh, makes his bastardized version of the Mai Tai, I'm going to provide you with the authentic uh, original recipe from Trader Vic's of the Mai Tai. And this is also provided in the book Smuggler's Cove Exotic Cocktails Rum and the Cult of Tea. Okay, it's gravy all over, man. Uh, Mookie and I are going to make uh, Chappie's Bastardized Mai Tai. So um, this is my own Mai Tai creation. Um, so I'm gonna start with, uh, I have my cocktail shaker with a little bit of ice. Um, always uh, a must for Chappie's Bastardized Mai Tai is dark rum. So I'm gonna make enough for two small glasses. So we're going to go two ounces of dark rum. I have Captain Morgan's dark rum. All right, we're going to go two ounces of pineapple juice. Two ounces of passion fruit juice. This is a passion fruit. It says tr tropical passion. Uh, so it's a passion fruit uh, juice blend. It's really hard to get actual passion fruit from Canada, but if you can, get it. Uh, so that's two ounces of passion fruit juice. And then um, I like to add guava nectar. Guava nectar is not traditional to Mai Tais, but I really like guava nectar. So we'll go two ounces of guava. And then I have one ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. And then I have something called Orge or orgite. Uh, this is uh, a almond simple syrup. Uh, watch here where how I make make it from scratch. Hey everyone, I'm making some orgite. Uh, so orgite is a almond flavored syrup that's used in many 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 tiki drinks. So I roasted off uh, some almonds. Uh, so how I'm going to do it, I'm going to uh, sous vide it. So I have this gadget here. Um, I basically put the ingredients into a Ziploc bag. And then I'm going to set my sous vide, which is in water, uh, to 158 degrees. And I will sous vide it for an hour. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add the almonds. Again, I toasted them. And then, so th this is more or less a simple syrup. So I have three quarters cup of sugar. And then we're going to go a half cup of water. And then a little bit of uh, salt. And then again, I'm going to set my sous vide to 158 for an hour. And then after an hour, uh, we're going to add some Di Sarono. Um, it's like an almond liqueur and a little bit of orange blossom water. Uh, so I'll uh, let that go for an hour. All right, so I uh, strained out the um, almonds. Uh, cheesecloth would have been better. I got some little particles in there, but uh, we're at the cabin, so we don't have any cheesecloth. So. so again, this is uh, just a simple syrup uh, with the toasted almonds and a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna add the orange blossom water And Di Sarono. And that is Orgit. Okay, in goes the Orgier. Just a half an ounce of Orgier. And then I have Grand Marnier, but Cointreau would probably work a little better. Uh, it's just any orange liqueur. So we'll go half an ounce of Quant, or this is Grand Marnier. And then last but not least, just a dash of grenadine. Now this is homemade grenadine. Uh, on the Nolens episode, I made homemade grenadine for my hurricane. See here, you're supposed to bring it to a rolling boil for about five minutes and then take it off the heat. Um, I had it on a full on boil and I kind of forgot about it. And then when it cooled, it, uh, basically turn to hard candy so here okay so just a splash of grenadine and then we're going to give it a shake One for me, one for Mookie. And today I'm just gonna, I usually garnish with a lime, but I have lemon, so we're gonna go lemon wheel garnish. So coming up next, um, we have a bonus, Appies with Chappie by the Lake. So check it out. It's Appies with Chappie, bonus edition. Welcome to Appies with Chappie by the Lake. Uh, this is a bonus edition. I just found out that Trader Vic uh, was the originator of Crab Rangoon. So I'm going to make a version of that. I'm going to do a Lobster Rangoon. Uh, this is what it says on Wikipedia. It says, Crab Rangoon was on the menu on a Polynesian-style restaurant. Trader Vic's in San Francisco since at least 1956. Although the appetizer was allegedly derived from an authentic Burmese recipe, the dish was probably invented in the United States by Vic Bergeron of Trader Vic's. So, um, it's a cream, cream cheese base recipe. So I got a big old tub of cream cheese. And then, of course, instead of 
crab meat. Uh, you can get really good crab meat in a can. Uh, this is cooked lobster meat. And then I'm going to add some Asian flavors. I got a little bit of soy sauce. Just a touch of sesame oil. You can really overdo it on the sesame oil. So just a little drop. And then some Worcestershire sauce. I have some uh, chopped up uh, chopped up chives. And then we'll go a little bit of mayo. Uh, some Thousand Island. And then some Old Bay seasoning. Uh, it says it's for seafood, poultry, salads, and meats. I think it's uh, from Maryland. They use it in the uh, crab cakes in, in uh, Baltimore. So I really like the Old Bay, so I'm going to give it a lot of Old Bay. And then we're going to give it a good mix up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake them in a muffin tin. I'm going to wrap them in phyllo dough. And I'm going to give it a good spray with my uh, butter spray. And we'll see how that turns out. Hey, thanks for watching Chappie's Tiki Bar, the Mai Tai episode. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And this is Chappie saying, when life gives you lemons, don't drink bleach. It's bad for you.